chapter 3 ruling the countryside the britishers now concentrated on ruling at the villages of the indian regions so are they successful in ruling what are the methods that they have adopted in ruling the countryside what are the problems that they have faced let us see the company became the diwan yes after the victory of battle of Buxar in 1764, the company now got the rights to become the Diwan of Bengal. It was dated on 12th of August 1765. The Diwani rights of Bengal are handed over to the company officials that is none other than Robert Clive. Now Robert Clive became the official Diwan of the Bengal. Here we need to understand that the Britishers are the alien rulers. Why I use the word alien rulers? They are not the local rulers. But in the villages, we have many local rulers who ruled and enjoyed the prestige and power in the past. So now the Britishers, now they got the Diwani rights. They need to control the local leaders. But at the same time, they cannot eliminate the local leaders. We need to remember this point very carefully. The fundamental point is here. They cannot eliminate the local leaders because they are not the local leaders. They are alien rulers for them. So they need the local leaders support. At the same time, the local leaders should not rebel against the English people. So they have to control the local leaders. That is the main thing what they understood from here. So that is the reason why I made the statement that local leaders could not be eliminated but need to be controlled. And later, revenue for the com company. Now, the company got the rights to collect revenue from the people. They want to increase their revenue. Why the company want to increase the revenue what they are getting from Bengal? Because earlier from Britain, they used to get gold and silver as imports for them to buy the commodities like cotton, silk, cloves and pepper from India because from the British products Indians don't have any product which the Indians need or in the Indian market that can be sold. The products what they want to buy from India have to be bought with the gold what they are getting from the British. With the rights of collection of the taxes, the revenue from the Bengal that import of gold from Britain to India has been stopped. The finance what they are getting in the form of revenue from the Bengal region now became the main financial source to buy the cotton, silk, clothes and the pepper and sell it to the countries abroad and the other regions. So now it generated income for them. The gold imports were blocked and as it is going on like this in 1770 a terrible famine hit the Bengal region and in the countryside nearly 10 lakh people died and one third of the population has been raised off. So looking at these conditions, the Britishers are now forced to respond and to change the taxation pattern. So finally, there is a time now to improve the agriculture in the country. If you don't improve the agriculture, we cannot generate the income for the company. Company want the improvement of income. For that, they need to improve the land facilities for agriculture. So in order to improve the facilities for agriculture, now the Britishers have designed a system. That system only is the permanent settlement which came into existence after two decades in 1793. What is permanent settlement. As we discussed earlier, Britishers are the alien rulers. They cannot wipe out the local leaders. So they want to involve the local zamindars, local leaders and they want to have an agreement between them that the local leaders have to collect the tax and pay it to the company. And in turn, the tax will be fixed. Once the tax is fixed, it is for permanent. So you can collect the tax from now permanently for another 20 years or 30 years in the same tax. 
so the people of zamindars and all these people would like to invest in doing the betterment of agriculture the supply of canal water and all these things can be improved so that the income from the agriculture will improve that will give an added advantage for the zamindars as the tax is fixed they'll pay the limited amount as tax and the rest will be profit for them like that the britishers thought and they started to implement the system of permanent settlement in 1793 so what happened with the permanent settlement did the permanent settlement work or not the point is they are the foreign rulers they got the rights to collect the revenue from the people they don't know what are the local conditions that are happening for them and what are the local problems they have they have fixed the revenue they want to stop the imports what are been coming from britain to buy the products in india so that was stopped revenue was generated in india which is compensating equally of the gold what they are getting from britain and now they are sending cotton pepper cloth and all backward to earn huge profits they want to increase their profit they want to increase the cultivation because if you increase the cultivatable lands more then they get more profit so in order to design this one they brought the permanent settlement system a permanent settlement is nothing but fixing of the tax permanently the zamindars will collect the tax from the people and pay it to the company as the tax is fixed zamindar can invest money and improve the infrastructure facilities of irrigation facilities for the farmers and improve the agriculture production with that the farmer will get profits the tax will increase the zamindar will get more profit and in turn the agricultural facility will increase the company also will be in the profit side and no breakage of the revenue will happen this was the initial thought process of the britishers when they implemented the permanent settlement system in 1773 then what happened what are the problems we'll check tribals dikkus and the vision of a golden age this is the chapter what we are going to deal about the tribal communities but before going into the details of the lesson let us see the introduction of the lesson we are now going to discuss about a person called birsa he was in the year 1895 found roaming in the forests of chota nagpur plateau region in bihar this man was found roaming in the forest wandering in the forest would be appropriate for this man as he was wandering in the forest people started to see that he is a man sent by the god to save them he had some miraculous powers he healed all the diseases of the people so later they started to worship this person so how did these people start to worship this person what are the problems that he has solved what how did he solve all the problems he was belonging to the tribal communities of mundas and his followers are santals and orohans this man is considered as god for certain communities or certain tribal groups now how did these people find him as a solution for him and in this chapter we find tribals then we have dikkus who are these dikkus the outsiders they considered birsa as a protector from the dikkus the outsiders are ruining the forest communities so how did he protect them one major thing what we all can understand in terms of economy is that their livelihoods are in danger there is no possibility for them to have any livelihood because many forest laws were implemented other than this the tribal groups are not like the brahmanas who have clear cut divisions and parameters for giving the lower caste upper caste regions this doesn't mean that there are no social and economical differences or differences between the people also are in existence in the same tribal communities so how did birsa become the god of the tribes what are the problems that he has solved how did he solve these problems why did people are so much interested about this person calling him as god why did he term 
that status of being a godly man we will try to find answers for some of these questions in this chapter tribal's life how was a tribal community life during that period they used to cultivate zum cultivation what is zum cultivation zum cultivation is also known as shifting cultivation they shift from one region to another region how do they shift from one region to another region they shift from one region to another region after doing their cultivation first they used to clear a patch of land and then they do the cultivation there after doing cultivation for a certain period of time they do the harvesting they do the plowing sowing the instruments what they used were axe and hoe what they used for the cultivation for sowing the soil tilling the soil and all these things once the cultivation is done then they now decide to leave that place so once the harvesting is done they burn the place and they go to the new place so this burning and leaving the land fallow empty for certain period of time gives a time for the land to acquire back its fertility levels of the soil at the same time the forest people tribes used to move from one region to another region so that they can move across the entire forest mainly this type of shifting cultivation is practiced in the hilly regions of north and northeastern regions of our country so here zooming cultivation means taking a small piece of land zooming cultivation where a small piece of land is taken cleared by the tribal communities using the axes and hoes once they clear this land they burn off it and in the ash they sow the seeds once the sowing of the seeds is done when the rains occur the seeds will germinate and the crop start to get into axis then the cultivation process is done finally for 2 or 3 years they do continuously agriculture here once they fix that yes now it is a time for us to move from this region to another region they clear this land do the harvesting leave the land empty and go to the other patch of land like this the tribal people used to move from one region to another region this also protects the soil fertility because they are giving a gap to regain back the fertility of the soil for some years at the same time they also use the new patch of land like this they start to move across the entire forest like this the tribal people used to do the cultivation and they used to practice shifting cultivation somewhere hunters and gatherers some of the tribal communities used to do the jumping cultivation while the other group of people used to do the hunting and gathering of the products so let us look into the details forests are essential for the tribal communities to do any activity as the forests are most essential for them because they completely depend on the forest only they were born in the forest they were grown up looking at the various products of the forest they used to climb the trees they used to collect the fruits they used to collect the rubber they used to collect the timber firewood charcoal everything every day to day need is been met in the forest itself so they never found anything other than forest is very important in their lives that is one of the major reason why the tribal communities largely depend on the forest so now one of the such community was cones this cones tribal group largely depend on the forest and most of the people used to do hunting they used to hunt whole along the day and whatever they used to hunt they used to divide among their group of people and they used to do the sharing of the food and they used to eat fruits and cooked the food with the roots of the trees and collected oil from the sal and mahua for doing their cooking like this they had everything they had food they have oils they have fruits so they have their livelihood happening here and they used to do the trading with the outside local markets whenever they produce something from the forest they used to carry the kusum and the palash flowers and they used to take it to the local market and sell it to the traders there with this they used to make huge profit and using this money currency what they are having 
that they used to exchange either for the good of grains or they used to buy the grains. So the exchange of the goods for grains has been happening either the valuable products which is being produced in the forest will be taken outside and given to them or they used to do some odd jobs like part time jobs like working in the local areas and from that they used to collect money and buy the grains and bring it back to the forest people because they have fruits they have everything only the food grains are not produced in the forest so they need to get the food grains from outside and we have a tribal community called baiga baiga people are never ready to work as a labor because they feel that when we work under anybody our dignity will come down they largely depend on the forest even in the forest if they don't have any job also they never try to work in any odd jobs or any other situations because they consider that their self respect will go down and the other major link between the tribal communities and the local markets is the money lenders whenever these tribal communities require money these people used to take loans from the money lenders for a very high rate of interest and when they sell their product outside for the traders they get some income which they used to give back to the money lender so their problems are taking loan and paying back the loan so they used to consider their problematic people who are creating problem for the tribal community lives are money lenders and traders so for them the outsiders are money lenders and traders so some of the tribal community people used to do hunting they used to hunt for the whole along the day and then they used to bring it and share whatever they have brought while the others are doing gathering they used to gather the valuable products what are available in the forest at that point of time for example we have kusum palash these two are the flowers which are used for coloring the clothes whenever the traders need their clothes to be colored they used to approach to these uh, tribal communities to get them kusum and palash they also used to sell sal and mahua from which the oil can be extracted so all these valuable products of the forest are been taken out of the forest by these tribal community people and they used to sell it in the local markets as the time passed down they started to expand their activity by working certain odd jobs exchanging their valuable products for grains sometimes when they don't have money they used to take money from the money lenders for very high rate of interest and they used to do the trading once they get the money back they used to return that money back to the money lenders we have another tribal group also named as baiga tribal community these people never liked or wished to work under anybody because they felt the self dignity of the baiga tribal community people will be under trouble if they work under anyone like this the tribal community's life was going on